Okay, so here's the board set up with a view of England and Wales. There's also Scotland in the distance, but uh, zoomed in just to give you a closer look of how the game will play out initially. So the different races all take their turns in order. There's 16 turns in total, so it is time limited. It's not a game like Risk, where you could just be going on and on and on and on, you know, never ending. The, once the 16 turns are done, that's it. Game over. So player who goes first is the Romans, and we've got it right at the onset of the Roman invasion. Uh, there's a Roman player title card here. It explains how they get points and stuff. You know, there's, there's one for the blue player with the, their Belgi and how they get points, and so on. So initially, the Roman player uh, plans their attacks. This first turn, it's a major invasion for them, so they, they get to plan their attacks, resolve them, and then plan their attacks again. The other races get uh, population, and it's based on how many sort of counties you control. For each plains you control, that's two population value. Each highlands is, uh, is one population value, and for every six you get, you get an additional guy, and uh, any remainder is stored for the, for the next turn. Uh, there's sort of stacking limits, so you can't like stack everybody in a Highlands in a, in a key defendable position because the Highlands are good for defense. You need to roll a six on a six-sided dice to actually kill someone in the Highlands. And because the Roman legions are so good, you actually need to roll a six to kill the Roman legions anywhere. Other people die on a, a five or six, so if there's a fighting in the plains, they die on a five or six. But because the legions are so good, they can kill people on uh, four or higher. So initially, the Roman player will plan their attacks, and they can overrun a position. So if they have more than double what the, uh, the other person has, they can overrun it and move further than just the one space. So they got one legion engaging here. I'll take two legions, overrun the position, and attack Essex, for instance, because these two guys are strong enough that they can bypass this particular guy. And so the Roman legions plan all their attacks, and they don't get the population bonus because they have to get skilled legions coming in from the Roman Empire. So they're handled a little bit differently. And then if the Romans win, they get to place a fort, and so it sort of counts as uh, Roman roads if they win here and then they can freely move between uh, counties they have uh, that have Roman forts on because they built uh, a very effective Roman road system. And the Romans can move three spaces a turn without the Roman roads and everyone else save cavalry can only move two. Later on in the game leaders come in and they add one to your die roll and they also uh, allow your movement, uh, your troops to move up to three spaces. So it's die roll heavy, and you know, if you're getting terrible dice, you're not going to be doing so well. But then hopefully the other players realize that, and they'll be attacking other people. Because this game isn't like Risk. It's not like you want to just beat down the weakest player constantly, knock them out, steal the Risk cards, and keep going. Right? You want to have the most points at the end of the game. So if everyone's knocking down the lowest guy, you know, well then, you know, if, let's say, blue has horrible luck most of the game, and everyone's beating down blue, well then, you know, red and green are going to be really close, and there's not going to be a difference between them at the end of the game. So it's kind of in the person's best advantage to then uh, not keep hitting blue, but then have red and green duke it out to try and get in first place, which allows sort of a catch-up ability on blue. And also, if there is a runaway leader, if, you know, someone's doing way better than they normally should, then everyone else can gang up on him to try and, and push him down. So it's really neat, and then throughout the game, the different invaders will come in from the sea and whatnot. So, you know, the, the Irish attack, the Scots attack, the Saxons, the Jutes, the Angles, the Normans, the Danes. It's really neat, you know, you got the historical leaders, you got, you know, Alfred the Great coming in, William the Conqueror. It's really neat 
It's a fun simulation. I think the rule book leaves some things to be desired. You know, it's, it's not well written, it's not well organized. There's no sample turn. I know that's one thing I like to keep harping on is, you know, to learn the game the first time, have a sample turn. Uh, you know, I've read through the rules several times. The very first time I played the game, I played it incorrectly. I wouldn't have if there'd been a sample turn, you know, showing this is what this person would have done, and, and so on and so on. So, you know, for someone who's just playing a game cold, I can't overemphasize how important I think putting a sample turn in the rule books is. You know, saying, okay, the Romans did this, the Belgi reacted this way, the Welsh reacted this way. You know, it doesn't take long. If you already know the game, you can include it, and this clearly expresses to the reader how the game should be played. Otherwise, someone's trying to interpret the rules, you know, and uh, using statutory interpretation to try and figure out the rules. I don't know. I, th I just think it's something that doesn't take long to do that publishers could be putting into their games. And this game, specifically, could really have used it. Uh, but there it is. It's still a fun game. It's, it's a long game that, you know, has a lot of luck. Some people don't mind playing a short game with a little bit of luck, but they don't want to play a four-hour game and then feel that they got cheated on, you know, one bad dice roll. You know, I don't think that really happens because I think throughout the game, you know, a four-hour game, luck balances out between everybody generally, or people react to it that way. It's, it's a very fun game, you know, just conquering uh, the regions, getting more population and conquering back. It, it's fun. I really enjoy it. If, if you like those kind of uh, area games like Axes and Allies. If you like Axes and Allies, I think you'll probably like this game. If you hate Axes and Allies, I think you'll probably not like this game. It's really fun. It's got that historical flair, you know. You feel like the thousand year passage of time is actually happening and you can see, sort of recreate history and try to change it for the better. There's some more rules such as uh, submission to the Romans. And if the Romans are doing really good, the other tribes can agree to submit to them. Um, you know, you can look in the rule book for a more detailed I'm not really going super in depth. I just wanted to give you an overview of the game. I like it. I think it's good. If you can find a copy relatively cheap, I'd recommend buying it if you like the Axis and Allies style of game. I, I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, however, if you don't like that style of game, if you're a Euro only player, you'll probably hate this game. But if you like the American style, you'll like this. It's great. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I think generally though you probably want people uh, at the relative uh, equal experience level. You can, you know, you can play with one or two new people, but you just have to sort of explain to them the asymmetrical nature. And you know, initially Rome does really good, but then the yellow player uh, sort of uh, falters out later on, and the the other colors have to play accordingly. It's a fun game. It's a great game. I really enjoy it. Uh, I think you will too, but maybe not if you're not uh, an American gamer. Uh, Till next time, have fun gaming.